According to the news media, the White House is in chaos. The administration is falling apart, and Donald Trump will never be able to win the Republican nomination for president. Oh, wait, scratch that last one. He'll never win the election for president. Oh, wait. Well, anyway, let's move on. All across this great land, from New York to Los Angeles and nowhere in between, the mainstream media is declaring that President Donald Trump's administration is in disarray. The resignation of Michael Flynn reveals a White House that can never possibly match such landmark accomplishments of the last administration as... Uh... Wait, I'm thinking. The guy was in office for eight years. He must have accomplished something. What was his name again? Skinny, coffee-colored guy. Had a name like a terrorist? I forget. But to return to the ineffectiveness of the Trump administration, the media, having scoured the opinions of the populace from 57th Street in Manhattan all the way to 43rd, have decided that this is an administration doomed to failure. Mainstream journalist Mendacious Race Hire says there's absolutely no indication that a man like Donald Trump can succeed. Mr. Race Hire was a reporter for the New York Times, a former newspaper, until he was fired in the latest round of cutbacks there and evicted from his apartment. The former reporter for the former paper gave a press conference in his former apartment, standing in his underwear before an array of empty wine bottles and saying, quote, why on earth would anyone think Donald Trump could accomplish anything as president? Sure, he was a successful real estate developer and a TV star, and he won his presidential campaign, but can he do this? Mr. Race Hire then held a cigarette lighter to his backside and caused the flame to explode clear across the room. He was immediately hired to work at CNN. It's apparently a talent they look for there. Other journalists are now claiming that Trump is mentally ill. Former blogger Andrew Sullivan, speaking from the former blogger's home for the consistently ridiculous, told CNN, quote, Trump is a pathological liar. First, he said he'd removed the Martin Luther King bust from the Oval Office, and it turned out he hadn't. Then he said he had threatened to invade Mexico when he hadn't. Then he went on to say he was easing sanctions on Russia, which he wasn't, unquote. When Sullivan was told these were all lies told by journalists rather than Trump, he responded, quote, Oh, well, then maybe it's the journalists who are mentally ill. That would explain why they never covered the fact that Sarah Palin hid someone else's baby in her womb for nine months, unquote. All in all, journalists agree that the Trump White House is ineffective, dishonest, and in disarray. As New York Times editor Blithering Prevarication III told a room full of former reporters who were packing up their bags after being fired, quote, I could tell you stories about the chaos at the White House, but unfortunately I don't have time right now because our building is on fire. We needed the insurance money. Run for your lives, unquote. Trigger warning, I'm Andrew Claven, and this is The Andrew Claven Show. All right, it's mailbag day. Hooray, yes. And we are going to explain everything that is happening in Washington in the wake of uh, Michael Flynn's resignation and all the different theories about what's going on. We're going to tell you the app. Our theory is the only uh, guaranteed true one because it's ours. But the most important reason to listen to the show is free food. We are giving food away. <laughs> Three meals. If you go on to blueapron.com slash Andrew, you can get three sensational meals brought right to your home. This is the service that gives you restaurant-level meals. They send you the ingredients to your home, and you cook them and make a home-cooked, restaurant-level meal. It really, they really are good. I've tried them. They are just terrific. And they're really, like, exotic. It's not this kind of stuff that you would just normally cook. You get things like cashew chicken stir-fry with tango mandarins and jasmine rice, roasted pork with apple, walnut, and farro salad. I mean, let's face it, you're not going to make that yourself. But this way you get it. It's about 10 bucks a meal. It comes right to your home. You get all this variety. It's very flexible. You can pr uh, choose whatever meals you want. And... The first three are free. They are shipped to you free. There's no charge. Just go to blueapron.com slash Andrew, and you will get three free meals with no sh uh, with free shipping. Blueapron.com slash Andrew. You will love how good it feels and tastes to create incredible home-cooked meals with Blue Apron. So don't wait. It's blueapron.com slash Andrew. It's a better way to cook. 
<laughs> it says so right on the on there. But it really is. We we tried it. It was absolutely terrific. All right, so the swamp strikes back. <laughs> Donald Trump said he was going to drain the swamp. He didn't realize there were all these hideous creatures living in the swamp who were going to come crawling out and attack him back. And they've come after him uh, and taken out uh, Michael Flynn, or at least helped to take out Michael Flynn with weird leaks and all kinds of stuff that's going on and that is now being picked up by the press. Yesterday, I said that you got to choose a side because this is what, you know, they call it the deep state. That's a little bit uh, science fiction-y or thriller novel-y to me. But, but this is the bureaucratic state that basically thinks it should be able to rule that your toilet is a waterway and therefore the EPA has the right to regulate how you use it. I mean, this is what these guys think. They think they should be regulating without legislation every aspect of your life. And when Donald Trump says starts to take that away, he's been gutting Obamacare. He's just yesterday, he uh, helped started to gut uh, Dodd Frank, an absolutely appalling piece of legislation that puts the government in every business, uh, you know, uh, boardroom in America. Uh, and he's doing this, and these guys are losing their power, and they're coming back, and they're coming after him. And I said, you have to choose sides. Whatever you think of Trump, you got to choose sides between the state and Trump. Yesterday, Bill Kristol, a never Trumper, who I, I well, he he tweeted this. I obviously strongly prefer normal democratic and constitutional politics, but if it comes to it, I prefer the deep state to the Trump state. Well, folks, <laughs> that to me, that to me is making an idol out of your personal feelings. You know, he doesn't like Trump. He doesn't like the fact that he, you know, he did everything he could to try and stop him. He made, in my opinion, a complete and utter fool of himself. But that he didn't do anything as bad as choosing this bureaucratic slavery, and that's what it is. It's a completely un-American over Trump. It's ridiculous. It is ridiculous. I don't care what Trump's flaws are. So let's take a look at what happened, because there's still a lot of questions. There's still a little bit of mysterious. You remember, obviously, everyone knows at this point, Michael Flynn, uh, the national security advisor, had to resign after he lied to Pence, apparently, about conversations he had had with the Russian ambassador about sanctions that Obama had put on Russia after Russia hacked into our election system and tried to basically skew the election. So the big question that the the media, the media is spinning this is Russia has taken over our government. And the big question they're asking is why it took so long. So yesterday, Sean Spicer, my second favorite person in the administration, but I, I really love Pence. I think Pence is great, but I think Spicer, I just think he ought to come out like dressed in leather with a whip at this point. So he goes out and he explains uh, what, what was going on. So this is the first, uh, yeah, number five. We've been reviewing and evaluating this issue with respect to General Flynn on a daily basis for a few weeks, trying to ascertain the truth. We got to a point not based on a legal issue, but based on a trust issue, where the level of trust between the President and General Flynn had eroded to the point where he felt he had to make a change. The President was very concerned that General Flynn had misled the Vice President and others. He was also very concerned in light of sensitive subjects dealt with by that position of national security advisors like China, North Korea, and the Middle East, that the President must have complete and unwavering trust for the person in that position. The evolving and eroding level of trust as a result of this situation and a series of other questionable instances is what led the President to ask for General Flynn's resignation. So. You know, the one thing they kept asking everybody, they kept asking Kellyanne Conway yesterday, why did it take so long? They, they warned you that Flynn would be subject, uh, v vulnerable to Russian blackmail. Why do, well, the person who warned them was the acting attorney general, Sally Yates, who you will remember he had to fire when she refused to enforce his travel ban. So Sally Yates was an Obama operative who never should have been there in the first place. That he didn't trust her, take her you know, advice, it means nothing to me. But the, the way they're trying to spin this now, the New York Times, their big headline is today that other, uh, other members of Trump's campaign had contact with Russia and Russian intelligence. Listen to this story. This is from the New York Times, a former newspaper. Phone records and intercepted calls show that members of Donald Trump's 2016 presidential campaign and other Trump associates had repeated contacts with senior Russian intelligence officials in the year before the election, according to four current and former American officials. So Obama operatives feeding stuff to the New York Times. American law enforcement and intelligence agencies intercepted the communications around the same time they were discovering evidence that Russia was trying to disrupt the president 
presidential election by hacking into the Democratic National Committee, three of the officials said. The intelligence agencies then sought to learn whether the Trump campaign was colluding with the Russians on the hacking. The officials interviewed in recent weeks said that so far they had seen no evidence of such cooperation. So they're talking to the Russians. Trump had a lot of business dealings with Russian, Russia, and they especially sing singled out Paul Manafort, who has had contacts with Russia that I consider unsavory, but they were legal. I mean, they were completely legal, right? And they so they said one of the guys was Paul Manafort, and they didn't name the other people. So, of course, Manafort has dealings with Russia. I mean, the guy was practically, you know, the, the publicity guy for the president of the Ukraine. And Manafort's response was, this is absurd. I have no idea what this is referring to. I've never knowingly spoken to Russian intelligence officers, and I've never been involved with anything to do with the Russian government or the Putin administration or any other issues under investigation today. The point is, that the, the, they talk to businessmen in in Russia, the businessmen and the intelligence officers. You cannot tell them apart. This is a this is a nothing burger story. Okay, it's a nothing burger story. And and by the way, you know Spicer also dealt with this. There was no illegality involved with what Flynn did. There's no reason why this administration, even before they come into office, can't call up another government, even if you don't happen to like the government, and say, you know. We don't like the sanctions that were imposed on you, or you know, hold your fire until we get into office, or or whatever. There's nothing illegal about this. They they can do. I mean, they talk about the Logan Act, as I said. No one's ever been prosecuted. No one ever could be prosecuted on it, as far as I'm concerned, because it violates the First Amendment. So okay, let let's just take a look. You remember in 2012 when Obama famously left the mic open and he was talking to the outgoing president, uh, Medvedev, a lot of Vs, whatever his name is. He was going out, Putin was coming in, and Obama leaned over and was talking about our missile defense system, right? He was talking about our missile defense system and was caught on a hot mic saying, oh, I'll have a lot of flexibility after after the next election, because it's my last election. Now, I want to play number three, cut number three, which is the way CBS News covered this story. Okay, here it is. President Obama was overheard giving Medvedev a very candid political assessment of his ability to deal with the major problems between the U.S. and Russia. All of the issues can be solved, the president told Medvedev, but he stressed that it was particularly important for incoming Russian President Vladimir Putin to give him space on the missile defense system which the U.S. and NATO want to install in Europe. This is my last election. Yeah. And After my election, I have more flexibility. Yeah. Yeah. I understand. I transmit this information to Vladimir and understand what Republican presidential contender Mitt Romney said the overheard remarks signaled that the president plans to cave to Russia on missile defense. That is an alarming and troubling development. This is no time for our president to be pulling his punches with the American people. White House officials shrugged off Republican criticism as campaign rhetoric. But, Scott, they did acknowledge the president's remarks. And in a statement, they said, since 2012 is an election year in both countries, it is clearly not a year in which we are going to achieve a breakthrough. And you can't see it in this cut, but Scott Pelley, the anchorman and a Democrat hack, is smirking through the whole thing. He's, oh, you know, like it's campaign rhetoric. It's also now listen to Chuck Todd covering. Remember, remember these sanctions that we're talking about. These sanctions were imposed by Obama as a political ploy to basically delegitimize the election of Donald Trump. They were just, he was just making a big fuss over this hacking into the election. You know, he was making a big show of it, which he would never have done it. He would never have done it, I don't think, if, if Hillary was elected. Here's Chuck Todd covering Flynn's resignation. Good evening. I'm Chuck Todd here in Washington. Welcome to MTP Daily and welcome to day one of what is arguably the biggest presidential scandal involving a foreign government since Iran-Contra. Take a breath. Hyperbole aside, folks, hunker down, because this is a class five political hurricane. <laughs> <laughs> so, so getting not putting in our missile defense system, you know, whispering to the Russians that we don't worry about it. I'm not going to put in the missile defense system. That's just campaign rhetoric. But 
having a perfectly legal conversation with, uh, you know, the Russian ambassador about some silly sanctions, that's a class five hurricane, the worst thing since Iran-Contra, the, the only scandal they covered because it was Reagan's scandal. That's the only reason he knows it happened. He doesn't know about any of the scandals that happened during Obama. Hey, we're do, going to do the mailbag on the other side of the break, but you got to come to the dailywire.com to hear it, or you can subscribe and you can watch the whole show on the site and put your questions in for next week.